Dear Father in heaven, we thank you that we're able to join together on your special day, the Sabbath. We pray that your Holy Spirit will fill each one of us and draw us closer to you. I pray that you'll speak through me and I pray that we'll all have a blessed day today and help us to keep the Sabbath holy. And I pray that your angels will protect us and keep us safe and draw others to us through you. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, um, I have a, I grew up in a, um, an alcoholic home. Um, so there's a lot of dysfunction in my family. My mother married when she was young and, uh, my biological father was abusive. So, and he was also an alcoholic and he was a police officer. So he would abuse my mother and my mother would call the police and they'd come and he would say, you know, don't, everything's fine. Don't worry. <clears throat> so for the first three years of my life, I just saw a lot of abuse and, um, and anger. And then my mother left him. It was my, just my sister and I, and, um, then she remarried it when I was six <clears throat> to another alcoholic, but he wasn't abusive. So they were both active alcoholics. And, um, I also, before she remarried, when, when she was separated from my, my first, my biological father, I was sexually abused by my uncle. And <clears throat> then, um, she remarried and she's still married to him today. And, um, they just celebrated their 50th year anniversary. And everyone in my family's in recovery today. We're all in, um, well, I don't, I don't any longer go to AA meetings, but my parents and my sister do. Um, <clears throat> so we're one big happy family now. <laughs> not really, but we are, but they're not, I'm the only Christian in my family. I became a Christian. I got sober when I was 20 and shortly thereafter I had a, um, an experience where I felt the presence of God. And from that moment, I've always believed in God. And that's, you know, something that no one could ever take away from me. And how I had that experience was I was three months sober and I knew I couldn't drink anymore, but, and I didn't know who God was. And I heard people in AA meetings say, um, the, the people that had that were happy with themselves and comfortable with themselves. They always talk about the 12 steps and God. So I just started to pray to this thing that I didn't know if he even existed. I just said, if you're out there, show me. And I, I just put everything on the line for him. And, you know, they said in AA, if you're, if you think you're going to drink, um, try to help someone else. So I just, um, tried to help other people. And, I eventually, like one night I, I went home <clears throat> and I just, I still, my head was going and I, um, I didn't know what to do. And so I started reading the big book and there's a, a chapter in it called the vision for you. And it, it talks about, um, God. And, um, so when I saw, I started reading that and I, I felt like I knew I was doing the right thing. I was in the right place. Like the words were jumping off the page at me and it, it talked about, um, you know, God of the Bible and stuff. And so I, then I went to go to bed, sleep and that's when I had that experience. And right after that experience, I, God impressed me that, um, my aunt had given me a Bible that was sitting there and she, he impressed me that everything in that in the Bible is true and I need to come to know it and learn it. And it was all right if I didn't understand everything right then, but eventually I would have to know, you know, come to understand it. And <clears throat> so it was a King James and I, you know, it was too hard for me to understand. So I, I just, I went to a bunch of AA meetings and I asked, different people, different questions about the Bible. And I got all these just different answers. And I said, Lynn, why don't you just go buy one and read it? So I went to a Christian bookstore 
And the lady could tell I didn't know much about Bibles. So she said, here, why don't you try this one? It's a paraphrased one. So I got that and I started to read it from front to back. And um, I guess, so that was in 1985. And then in 1988, I eventually got to the, the, the New Testament and that's when I found out and learned about Jesus and I, I wanted to give my heart to him. <clears throat> so the only type of baptism I knew was a Catholic one. And so I went in the bathroom and I just put a little water on my forehead and I said a prayer and I asked Jesus to come to my heart. And that was in 1988. And <clears throat> so I, I believe, you know, that's when I became a Christian and shortly after that, you know, when you give your heart to the Lord, the Satan's going to be after you um, a month later. Well, let me just backtrack a little bit. When I first got sober and there were times when I had manic episodes, I, you know, I just started getting manic and um, I just thought you know, in, in AA, they call it a pink cloud, like if you're happy and joyful and everything and so I just thought I was always on a pink cloud and a month after I gave my heart to the Lord I was um hospitalized I was I was put I, I guess I was you know I was having a manic episode and I was hospitalized and I was diagnosed bipolar and so then for the next 10 years, I was often on medication. I was hospitalized about 10 times. <clears throat> I was told you're going to have to be on medication the rest of your life. And, um, you know, you were born this way. There's, you know, there's something in your brain that, that, um, you know, causes this to happen. And I remember that when I was first diagnosed that first time, the guy, like the social worker, he, he said, um, there are some people that outgrow this. And so I held on to those words. I said, that's going to be me. Cause I'm not going to take medication the rest of my life. And so, um, 10 years later, I, I felt like I had a good enough relationship with the Lord and I've I changed some things about my, my lifestyle. Like I, I quit smoking in 97 and then I, and then not long after that, I, I quit drinking coffee, um, caffeine. And I also in 99, I became a vegetarian. And so 10 years later, I decided to go off my medication and I, I didn't tell anyone. I, I didn't, my, even my best you know, my best friends, everyone thought I was going to have to be on medication the rest of my life. And everyone, even like friends, family members, everyone. So I went off my medication. I didn't tell anyone. It was just between me and the Lord. And um, six months went by and I didn't get manic. And then, I don't know, it just came up and my, my mother's like, have you been off your medication? And I said, yes. And so that was in August of 1998. So I haven't been on any medication since then. And yeah, praise the Lord. So much of it has to do with Ellen White and her writings about the health message. Um, like I said, the first thing I did was I quit smoking, then I quit caffeine. Um, in 99, I became a vegetarian. Um, with my family's strict vegetarians, my husband's, he's been one for over 40 years. And my daughter's just turned 16 and she's never had any meat or anything in her life. Um, we've brainwashed her pretty good. <laughs> we, if we're at the grocery store and we go by like the meat section or the fish section. She's like, oh, disgusting. Um, and I exercise a lot, probably like at least five days a week. Um, what else is there for health message? So, you know, I, it's been a long road. Um, I, I also take a lot of herbs and supplements that help. Um, I'm actually writing a book also um, to help other people that want to overcome this illness through 
natural, you know, means and, you know, lifestyle changes. So I have a coach that I'm working with <clears throat> on that. And um, also, um, I when I was, um, the first time I got married, it was in 93. And <clears throat> my husband was not in AA and he didn't, he wasn't really, didn't really have a good relationship with God. And I kind of got away from reading the Bible. So I remember being in my bedroom one day and I said, God, can you please help me to get back into reading the Bible again? And um, within a couple of weeks, I got a pamphlet on my car from the Seventh day Adventist church in the same town. And it was um, an invite for Bible study. So I sent the postcard in and then the head elder and his wife <clears throat> started coming to my house. They would come every Sunday and we'd go over it. We would, we would do on the discover Bible guides. So we'd go over a different um, lesson every week. And it, it was through those guides that I came to believe in the truth, you know, the Seventh-day Adventist church beliefs. And um, I ended up getting divorced. No, I, yeah, I got divorced a couple of years later. He, he was also um, abusive. And then I found, I married this other guy in in the church, I saw him get baptized and everything. And he also had a background like mine. He got, <clears throat> um, he was in recovery and that turned out to be the biggest disaster of my life. <laughs> um, he was extremely abusive in all different ways. And I was with him for a year and then I divorced him. And, <clears throat> um, now I, I've been married to my husband now that I met at church also. And we've been married. We just had 18 years <clears throat> and our daughter's 16 years old. And, um, you know, God's good the way he works in our lives. And, I've, you know, I've been through a lot. I People don't just come out of dysfunctional homes and, um, you know, I, I just had to learn a lot of lessons and just have <clears throat> pray a lot and try to overcome things. <clears throat> um, I need some water. You know, just because someone gets sober doesn't mean their their brain clears up. Um, like I just. I still like you take away the drink and the drugs and you still have a lot of um, mental things that need to clear up. And, you know, I had a lot of, I, I just can't, I can't say enough about Ellen White's writings because they, they've helped me so much in so many ways, her health <clears throat> message and also books like, um, what are they called? The three, there's three of them. Um, no, I can't think of the name. The, um, the, they're all about your the way your thought processes work and everything. Um, sorry, I can't think of the name. But I've you know I've read read a lot of her books, and then she's put every, you know a lot of things into perspective for me. And um, <clears throat> I also. Um, can't say enough about how important, you know, exercise is. It it helps me sleep better, think better, have more energy. Um, I, you know, I, I can't say enough about our health message. And <clears throat> I've also, our family is more conservative when it comes to Adventist message. Um, you know, we, we've come to learn the truth about things like we're, we've, gone back to the true, the original pillars of our faith regarding like the, um, the, the Trinity. We don't believe in the Trinity. We believe, <clears throat> you know, God, the father, his son and their spirit, the, the Godhead. And 
even just from that belief, um, it's improved our relationship with, with Jesus. I mean, knowing that he's living in us and not some third, you know, entity. Um, so, you know, um, God's brought me a long way and, you know, I still have a long ways to go, but through him, I've been able to change. <clears throat> um, be, because of my background, I've had to deal with a lot of anger issues. And, um, you know, that's gotten me into trouble. And I just pray every day. I, I put verses in my calendar so I can see them every day. <clears throat> Things to do with, you know, how to... Um, Verses that will help me to change, to become more like him, um, to get rid of that anger. And I also do need to, you know, work on forgiveness. Also, I pray about that. I, I think that's a lot of um, anger can come from that, like blame in the past. And I can't thank um god enough for all he's done in my life all the changes he's made how he's blessed our family and um i guess i can't i guess i can't think of anything else to say <laughs> so thank you for having me thank you so much lynn it's uh <clears throat> so please share with me and when you are talking about these things are you still, you're living yourself, somehow putting yourself back to the situation you were in? Is it hard for you to share what you have gone through? Um, actually, not at all. I, I probably, if anything, I probably share too much. <laughs> like, I'm too open about things. So, yeah, it doesn't bother me. Hey Amen. That's good. So um, those people who have been harming you, are they still alive or are they passed away? Have you been able to talk to them after you became a Christian? Um, you mean my like ex-husbands? Well, yeah, but probably that's difficult with them. They probably well, the my first one I, I never see anymore. He's not like a, he's not in the church or anything. And I haven't had any contact with him and my second husband, I have seen him. I, it turned out he never really stopped using. He was like, when I was with him, he, I just remember one night, like he never even came home one night. And I found out later he was, when we, when we did separate, we were trying to sell our house and I guess he went out one day like boating with his friends or something he came home and he was he was had been drinking and he he left something on the stove cooking and he almost burned half the house down so that prolonged our divorce and <clears throat> so it turned out he never really quit gave up you know drinking and drugging and i have and he's been in and out of the church since then like he'll he'll go away for a long time then come back and I have, I did see him one, I saw him a couple of times when I, my, we live in Texas now, my family and my parents, I'm from New England. So I grew up in Massachusetts and that's where I became a Christian and got baptized. And my parents live in New Hampshire, which is right next door. And I actually, we moved to New Hampshire also before we moved here. So my parents still live there and since I homeschool my daughter, we um, we go back for a month in the winter and a month in the summer. So when we go back, I I, tr I go visit other churches that I used, to, you know, that I've been to and stuff. <clears throat> and I I've seen him a couple of times. One time I saw him, we went, we went we got there a little late, me and my daughter, and they were in the middle of prayer, and I saw him, and so we left. <laughs> But then another time I went and I saw him and he came up to me and just, he said, I hope you forgive me. You know, I was, I was, um, you know, I was not a nice person back then. You know, I hope you forgive me. And I said, yeah, I forgive you. And, but as far as I know, I, I heard that he's married again. And I mean, I just, I don't trust him with a 10 foot pole. So I don't. <laughs> 
really but, see. I, but do you feel that since he uh, was uh, asking you about forgiveness, did that help your anger against him or? Um, I, yeah, I mean, I don't really, I don't like seeing, I don't feel like I have a lot of anger towards him. It's, I think most of it's my mother is who I have the issues with. Cause she's, she's still not a Christian. I mean, they're all the, the three, my father, my mother, and my sister are new age. I mean, they believe in God, they go to AA, but they're not Christians. And, you know, I think like sometimes my mother, my parents are happy for me that I found a religion that I'm happy with, but in other ways they mock me because, um, I mean, like for instance, there's a wedding coming up next month with my cousin. And I wanted to know if it was on Sabbath or not, because I didn't, you know, really want to go if it was on Sabbath. And my father, I was asking them what the date, what the time was, because it's on a Saturday. And um, I like I wanted, I didn't want to go to the reception on a Sabbath. And <clears throat> so I, I was asking, what time is it on, you know, on Saturday? And they're like, why? And I said, well, I don't want to go to a party if it's on Sabbath. You're not going to go, you know, like they still mock me a little, but, um, and other things they like, I mean, sometimes we're more conservative with our daughter, you know, we don't want her to do certain things and, you know, I have to always deal with that and stuff. So it's mostly my parents, I guess that I'm, that I have issues with, but you know, that's my, I have to just pray for my mother a lot. You know, it helps it helps to live 2800 miles away too. Right. But sometimes that's not even far enough away enough. <laughs> hmm. You know, I want to share a testimony of how I react. I was like you when I became an Adventist. I have uh, maybe been I don't remember now. I had been an Adventist just for a few years and then my sister was going to be married and that was on a Sabbath. And uh, in the beginning, my mother and father said, oh, we know that you don't want to go because it's on Saturday or a Sabbath. I don't remember what they called it. And But the closer we came to the day, they said, you have to go. And uh, I said, Lord, help me. So I, I did. Uh, I did. Uh, so I so my mom and dad said, well, you have to come and eat and then you can go afterwards. And I said, OK. And it was interesting because they had made special food for me. And th that person who sat on the right side and on the left side, everyone wanted to, 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 they thought it was so interesting with the food I got. So my uncle said, when you get married, we want to have that kind of food. <laughs> so I thought that was the kind of interesting. And just after eating, I went to the bathroom and I said, Lord, if you want me to stay here, you have to, to have someone talk to me so I understand you want me to stay. And I just went out from the bathroom and then I met another guest. And somehow we started to talk about, I don't remember now if it was health or if it was spiritual. But at 12 o'clock, my parents looked at me. Are you still here? <laughs> <laughs> so the whole evening, you know, the Lord was blessing, but I understand, you know, so that was my experience with them. Um, I don't know what, how would you other guys do, you know, if there is a wedding on the Sabbath? Mark. Yeah, I mean, um, if there was a wedding on the Sabbath, I, How's it going? if it was a family member, I, I mean, I wouldn't hesitate to go. Is it warm there? I don't see any, any reason to hesitate to go to a wedding on the Sabbath, but you know, I mean, as far as the, the partying and, and the things that you might get involved in there, that, that's what we need to be, be aware of. I think. Yeah. So, um, I think also today that I would go and I would ask the Lord to, um, you know, let me come in contact with people and hopefully could um, share some spiritual thoughts. Well, that's yeah. a, that's another that's another thing I was going to say is that your your conversation has to be geared towards the Lord. I mean, in everything you say and do, 
I think. Yeah. Don't you feel uh, that, I mean, I feel the same, you know, even in church, even in the look, you know, they talk about everything just like it should be in the world. So there we have to do the same. Yeah, we have to um, ask the Lord to help us to turn the conversation into spiritual things. And sometimes, you know, it's easy for me too, you know, if there is a person you haven't seen in a long time, so you really, you know, okay, it's Sabbath. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, we just have to ask the Lord to be wise to know what to do. So I'm yeah, sorry. Eva, Eva, I'm sorry. I was going to say that about the testimony. Her testimony is, of course, familiar to me, being an alcoholic and a drug addict for probably 49, 50 years. And then you come to the Lord and you, you have to deal with the people from your past. Well, what I've done is, is sort of shaking the dust off my feet to that lifestyle and to those people. And, and you know, the people that, that mocked me when I came to the Lord, I don't have any contact with them anymore. You know, then there's others that haven't mocked me that talk to me and, and treat me decent that the Lord is keeping them around because, you know, I can speak to them on spiritual things and they listen without mocking. So, you know, we have to just keep one foot in front of the other as we head towards the kingdom and we need to be about the Lord's business. And if we're like that, then then things will work their way out. You know, mocking and things like that don't bother me anymore like they used to when I first came to the Lord. So her, her, her story is very familiar to me. Yeah, thank you, Mark, for sharing. Yeah, Lynn, so you are not alone. Yeah, I, I, the, it, the worst, it mostly has to do with my daughter and how she gets affected by them. So, I mean, as far as I go, it's not a big deal. But, um, yeah, fortunately, like, I, I had to go to my sister's wedding, too, a few years, you know, she got married a few years ago. Um, and both my husband and I went. and. It was on Sabbath, and then we just didn't really, we, we didn't participate in the the party part of it. It was during the day, it was at my parents' house in their backyard. And, you know, we left kind of early, too, so we weren't, <clears throat> didn't have to deal with the partying stuff. Right. This wedding I'm going to, it actually, the wedding is, I think, at like 4 o'clock, and then Sabbath is at 5, so that works out well but you i don't really i don't really have contact with people from my past i mean i might i you know i i see people on facebook like from high school and stuff but it's that's it's not really a big deal and my i mean for the most part my parents um they they're like i said they're happy that i'm happy and it's just it's just things that we have to watch for regarding my daughter and you know like sometimes they do things behind my back so we've had to cut things recently we actually we cut i cut them off from um i blocked them on my daughter's phone so she, she if she wants to contact them she has to do it through my phone instead because she i mean my my parent my mother was buying um paying for spotify for her <clears throat> And then she was listening to music that we don't agree with, you know, stuff like that. So we've, they, they don't have any contact unless they go through, you know, call her on my phone. So. And, and, your, and your daughter is accepting it. Yeah. I mean, she doesn't really, I'm usually the one that says, do you want to call my, you know, do you want to, we call her Mammy. Do you want to call Mammy and let her know what's going on? She's like, oh, I don't really have time now. So it's, I'm usually the one telling her to call my parents, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm so glad that you were homeschooling her. Yeah, definitely. Selma, I can see your hand. Yes, I have a lot of things similar to Lynn. Um, I've been married, I'm in my third marriage and it's not very good. Um, the first marriage, he was an Adventist, but, you know, 
couple of weeks after we got married, he stopped going to church. And I don't know if I would have married him if I'd known he was going to do that or not. But um, then I was angry at God, you know, for what happened, because I thought I'd never find an Adventist guy because I didn't in academy when I went. And uh, then I went to a tech school, which was in the world, from, you know, and I was working your home. But, you know, so I was thrilled that, you know, we had known each other since eight years old, but, you know, um, didn't date until we were 20 and, you know, got married the next year. So we were young. And um, then I was angry. So I just didn't care who I married. And so the next guy was a Catholic guy. The next guy was uh, like really no religion. And but the second guy, he loved to dance and was a good dancer. And, you know, I've been very good. I had some with my teenage friends when I was growing up, when I was set by parents, you know, the neighbor kids, you know, but um, uh, at the weddings and my son got married to a Catholic lady. And, you know, my kids were never Baptist in the church because when I was divorced, I never had my kids, set, uh, you know, dedicated because I thought all the other people back in the day, it wasn't so popular divorce and in the uh, 70s. And uh, I thought, well, um, you know, I'm not going to go up there without a husband, you know, so I never did anything, you know, but so they're no, never been baptized in any religion uh, I know of, but um, I did dance with my son at the wedding, you know, he had at the reception when they had the, the dance for the mother with the, the, the son and the, you know, the bride that, you know, switched around. And uh, I had wilderness years of, I guess, 33 or 34 wilderness years. And then about in 2010, I started, you know, uh, 29, 2010 coming back. And um, please try then, to make it, please try to make it short. Yeah. And then, uh, so anyway, to make a long story short now, um, I don't know, my son talks to me and, you know, my ex-husband and I have forgiven each other. And he said he still has feelings for me and I do him. And so I don't know, it's been like that. So I said, and we're in the same town now. And he even moved closer to me. He's only two and a half miles away. So I don't know how things are going to turn out. And I said, God, I don't know. I've made so many mistakes. Just handle it. And so that's about it. And I had the bipolar issue and I had ADHD along with the 10 years of medication. That's all. Mm, so, thank you so much for yeah, sharing. Was, thank you so much yeah, for sharing, okay. Selma. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's um we don't know what uh, we have in store, you know, when we go into different relationships. But the good thing is that God can turn everything to something good. Don't you feel that, Lynn? Yeah, definitely. My one thing I'm really grateful for is my husband has <clears throat> um he knows he's very well studied when it comes to the Bible. So and that's, I mean, that's like the first thing that attracted me to him. So that's been, he's, he's helped me see things that I didn't know before. And so I'm grateful for that. Oh, man. Yeah, March. Yeah, I, I just was curious as to Lynn, how did you find out about the truth about God? I mean, how did that all come about? Through my husband. <laughs> Um, oh. I, he, he came across some videos on, you know, YouTube videos and, um, that's how he, it's probably been close to five years ago. And through those videos, it, actually the people that he first started to watch are people that we don't even, we don't agree with any longer. Like he, that was his intro, but then he found out they believed in things that he didn't think were biblical, but, um, so since then, it's just been a journey. You know, we've we also um, we're part of the restitution ministries <clears throat> out of Australia, and even through that group, we've you know we've had some issues. Like some a year and a half ago, about a third of the people left because they they became flat earthers. So uh -huh. they're they're gone now. So um i mean satan's always he never stops trying to like just pull people away from the truth amen so, that's actually the ministry we're we're a part of my husband's actually like the main contact for the u.s for rm now is that is that matter monsoor's uh group yeah see before we were before we were part of RM, Nader and Ahmad used to be also part of RM, and they split off because they have different 
beliefs than we do regarding like, you know, born sinners and things like that. So they're no longer, they have their own ministry. They're, we're restitution ministries, they're restoration ministries, I guess. So we're not with them anymore. And and then Bill Pinto and his brother and a few other people, they all became flat earthers. So they're not with us anymore either. Yeah, I was so sorry when he started to believe in the flat earth. You know, I thought he had such good uh, sermons. I and know. Boy. We were, we were heartbroken. We were just, we were in shock. It took a year for us to, we were just in total shock. Well, I don't get it. <laughs> right. Yeah, well, it's uh, sad with all these splits, you know, it's a split right. for everything. Right. Um, I saw this uh, program with, um, you know, the different, not all of them, but the part uh, of the different self, uh, not self-supporting, but these groups. And they were talking about how can we manage to work together? The Lord doesn't want all these splits. And I think they start, They said, well, we have to, to talk more together. We have to study more together. We have to pray more together. And we all need to humble ourselves to accept if we have taken wrong. And uh, so um, I think, uh, you know, there needs to be a, a reformation in the hearts. Right. I saw the last link with um, another. That was powerful. But we talked about the time we are living in now with vaccination, and uh, maybe some of you saw it. Well, yeah, that's I. I was gonna. I was just gonna say. I studied with Matter all that I have for about nine years, and uh, I got word that somebody told me that he was teaching original sin that we were born guilty. So I, I asked this person, where could I find these, these teachings? So he couldn't tell me, he just said, Oh, he teaches it said he was a hypnotist and that he deceives people. Well, I have been on a mission to watch and study every video that man's made. And I'm going to tell you, he's a godly man. He doesn't teach original sin. He, he, in fact, he teaches completely on what sin is and uh so he's being labeled wrongly so i just wanted to let lynn know that in case she wanted to study deeper into what he's teaching because that man is of god he's he's nothing else so i just wanted to say that thank you yeah we've definitely had our back and forth with natter and we've seen i've seen videos myself where i've seen era being taught um, I was going to ask you guys if you're interested. I send out a health um, nugget every Sabbath. It's uh, an email if you want to join my email list. I've been doing it since the late 90s. Um, it's called Food for Thought. And I sent out, it's a Bible verse, a quote from Ellen White, something to do with health, and then a link to something on the web to do with health. If you're interested, I can. Um, give you my email address and you can email me and let me know you want to be a part of that. Mm. And also if Mark was interested, I could give you my husband's email too. And you guys could talk about Natter if you're, if you were interested in that. So maybe your husband would like to have his testimony here one day. Yeah, sure. That would be nice. Yeah. Um, (laughs) <laughs> can I can I ask one more question? Sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I just wanted to ask Lynn and and she, you know, her husband, exactly what is it that Natter's teaching falsely that is that is error? That I've been looking for it and I've asked and nobody can tell me. So I would if they could ever tell me, I, I would, you know, they not right now, maybe, but send me a email or something, I would uh, I'd appreciate it because and I, I owe a lot to that that ministry and, and that teaching. And I'm yeah. looking for the error. So I, I'm curious. Well, um, it, would, it would be nice if we all could hear that. Yeah, yeah I just I'd love to you hear my, what he's I just put out my email address. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I think that sounds very good with um 
verse from the Bible and a health nuggets? They, I know one thing, they don't come right out and they deny that they, that they teach original sin. <clears throat> they do it in a very subtle way. And I've, I've personally, I mean, it's been a long time, but I've watched videos and I've, I've heard them say things that were not true. I mean, I'd, I'd have to go look them up, <clears throat> but um, so I've heard it firsthand, not just from someone telling me that. And there's yeah, also, I know, I know they teach it's that they teach what the Bible teaches that sin is a condition that that we're all born with fallen sinful flesh that our our flesh is condemned to birth. But that's that's not guilt. We're not guilty until we break a commandment. But that's what I've caught them teaching on that subject. So I, I've been with the Bible seeing that what they're saying is so. That's why I know it's not original sin in that context that we're born guilty. And they they also teach like holy flesh also. So. Um, what is that? What is the holy flesh? That. Like once <clears throat> it's um like you like you can't sin anymore, like um yeah, like you like once you've given your heart to the Lord, like you can't sin. Um I mean I um it's been a while since I was since I've studied about this stuff, but you you would probably really like talking to my husband. He he would he can tell you more. I just, I study things and then I forget what. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm really looking for the error because it's very important to me. That man has brought me through a lot. And I mean, not him, but, but the way he's teaching and what he's teaching. So I just, I don't like condemning someone until I can see the evidence. That's all. All right. Thank you. Well, though. do you see my email address? Yeah, I'll, I'll, all right. let me see. But Lynn, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll get. I I was thinking that maybe your husband doesn't want to have a meeting here, and then it will be on YouTube. That's uh, probably not the best. But you know, we could just meet here, and uh, you could in, in, inform us because sometimes I wonder too. You know, what is all these groups? What what are they thinking differently? I don't know. Right. Yeah. Do you do you only meet at this time on Sabbath, or is there another meeting time? Well, we also meet on Sunday at six o'clock. So we could uh, arrange on uh, if that's better for your husband. Yeah. So that would be like, is that eleven o'clock our time? Your seven hours different, right? Yeah. Now it is. Uh, what is it? It's uh, three fifteen. Yeah, it's 8, 15 here, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3. Yeah, you're seven hours. So that will be 11 o'clock. So you'll, are you meeting, you're meeting tomorrow at 6 o'clock? Yeah, but uh, I have scheduled people uh, quite a long time ahead. So let's see, it could be the 7th of uh, November is actually the first free date. Okay. Yeah, I'll let them know. He'll... I'll um, text you, but I'm sure he'd like to talk. He loves talking about stuff like that. Yeah. Really I want to, I wanted to add one more thing as far as the Holy flesh thing goes, you know, the, the word of God does say that, that if, if we are in Christ, we cannot sin. And right. if we, and if we sin, then we are not in Christ. So to say that if we remain in Christ, that we cannot sin, that some might think of that as holy flesh, but that's being in Christ. So we cannot sin, but if we sin, we're not in Christ. So I think that's the key to understanding that. All right. Yeah, Selma, I can see your hand. Maybe you didn't take it down again. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I just had a quick question. Since you were mentioning Nadar Mansour, is that what the original sin he was saying in the holy flesh? Because the reason I ask, my brother told me about him first and that he was on PHM and um, the other guy is AM. Uh, it, it's a, it begins a W A D E something. I'm not sure, but um, I've seen the videos. I can't find it now, but on YouTube or something, 
And so I just would have to check with my brother if he knows why they're not in it anymore. I guess they left this because I haven't don't know where they're at now, but I've seen them occasionally on my YouTube or someplace, I think. So I'd have to ask my brother because he's sort of uh, knowledgeable in certain things, you know, because he told me about it. I'll have to ask him. That's all. Yeah. Thank you, Selma. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, does anyone else have any questions or comments to Lynn? I think it's so great, Lynn, that when you think about what you have gone through in life and where you are now, and it's so good that the Lord has uh, promised to all of us, he who has started a good work in us, he will finish it. So, Amen. Yeah. I can see that Aunt Christine is putting, uh, sending you a heart. <laughs> so uh, that means thank you so much. Yeah, I think it's very good that people can open up and share whatever they have gone through in life. So uh, maybe Mark, can I ask you to have the closing prayer? Father in heaven, we uh, come to you with humble hearts. We've, uh, we've been blessed today by hearing Lynn's testimony and understanding that so many are being brought out of complete darkness and, and, uh, just just feeling as though that we we'll never accomplish anything in our lives and then you bring us to a place where we can speak of you boldly and with fondness and with with your son in our hearts we just we just are in all of the miracles you work in the lives of the people that love you and want to know you and as far as uh, we're talking about ministries around the world that claim your name and they claim the name of your son Father, please let, let us not uh, accuse and let us not turn our backs on anyone, but let's study together and let's understand one another. Mm -hmm. And let's let's work, work with your spirit in our hearts and not the spirit of uh, separation, because that seems to be what Satan is doing. And uh, I just thank you for the ones that have that have guided me to the light. And uh, and I don't want to turn my back on any of them, but I want to pray for them and I want to understand exactly what's being taught and i want to ask if something is wrong ask my brother maybe he might reconsider but we do this with your word open and before us and we do it in an attitude of prayer and, and i just love all these brothers and sisters here and the ones around this world that are celebrating you today on this sabbath day the day that you created everything I mean, that capped off the creation of everything. We thank you for the Sabbath and that we can be a part of your kingdom. And we thank you for these people in Jesus name. Amen.